Okay, is everyone good? Everyone signed in? All right, let's get started. Okay, TVM number nine, happy 222 day for those who celebrate. Um, <laughs> um, today we have good all craft granola bars speaking to us. Um, TVM number nine, let's go. This month's pillar is leadership. And here's some message from the grad special, the specialized grad programs. Um, that want to share that they wanted us to share with you guys so basically they have a little program where you can be a grad student for a day um it's happening the 28th through march 2nd and basically you get to shadow a grad student um and go to one of their classes to kind of learn more about the program so if you've heard about the mib program so the master's in international business program master's in marketing all that stuff um that's what this is and there's a qr code on the next page that you get to scan if you're interested. And we'll also send that out in the group me and on the Facebook. Um, they're also having info sessions coming up soon if you're interested um, in maybe pursuing a master's program. So here's a QR code to sign up if you'd like to. We're also gonna send it in the Facebook and the group me. I'll give you guys a second to scan it. Okay. All right, join a committee. <laughs> this semester, committees are in person. Um, they start at 6.15 before the GBMs in Heavener 140. And we have committees in marketing, finance, community service, and sustainability. Next, congratulations to our spring chairs. Yay. <laughs> Congrats, guys. I hope you guys have a very good experience with your awesome VPs. Um, yeah, being a chair is a great way to get involved in FWIB and stuff. And don't feel discouraged if you weren't chosen to be a chair. These are just semesterly um, commitments. And if you're interested in applying for executive board, we don't, it's not required to be a chair. Um, but yeah, congrats to you guys. Hey guys. Did you? Okay. Hey. Um, Sorry, I'm like having a blank with the Zoom thing. Join our GroupMe code if you haven't already. Um, we text a lot, just give updates, and there's just a lot of information and questions that go on there. And our Instagram is at FWBUF. Um, yeah, follow it. <laughs> um, on this QR code, that's the Facebook grouping page, which is what Emily was talking about that she'll post the grad stuff for. And on the other side is the website. So we also post the newsletters and um, the calendars there. And there's just a bunch of other information. And use code FWIB for Study Edge. It doesn't cost you any money. You just go to your account and then redeem a code and type in FWIB. And you'll get 5% back to us. And we really appreciate that. So we can do a bunch of cool things for you guys. We only have two general announcements. This is just our LinkedIn QR code. If you want to connect with us and kind of, you know, make those LinkedIn connections and talk to different alumni who are part of FWIB in the past. Um, and our next GBM is going to be a while from now. It's going to be on March 15th because we have a break for spring break. So have a great spring break until then. <laughs> Hey guys, so here are the marketing announcements. Congrats to my new chair. <laughs> um, and then also we're selling FWIB shirts, $15, and then women's empowerment shirts, $18 for the FWIB shirts. We are running out. We only have two more smalls and one medium. So if you guys are even interested in getting that as soon as possible, we are ordering more, but just letting you know they're running out. So text me, come find me after the meeting, come get your shirt, come get points. Um, and then we have our Chalk It Up event on March 23rd. And just that is just promoting savings in the swamp, which Jenna is organizing this huge event with a bunch of great speakers. So definitely come check that out. And for this week, we have two shout outs that I just gonna read real quick. Shout out Kyla Martin, the most helpful, inspiring, amazing mentor I could ever have asked for. And congrats on City's leadership program. So shout out Kyla, that's awesome. And then, Shout out Jessica Wang um, for accepting a Procter & Gamble Summer 2022 fi Finance Standout Camp at their global headquarters. So proud. So good job, everyone. Keep on filling that form out so you guys can get a cool shout out next week. Very 
Back again, I know you guys missed me so much. Um, the headshots were all sent out. If you had any problems, text this number on the slide. That's Jenna, you can find her in the group me, Jenna Contorno. And name tags will continue to be handed out soon. We hope to get those out ASAP. For community service, we rescheduled our cleanup with Gators Going Green for this Thursday. Um, there were some weather issues, just like we have technical issues. <laughs> um, so that's gonna be this Thursday from four to five. And we're gonna meet at Heavener Courtyard and walk to Midtown and pick up some trash. And then next Monday to close out Black History Month, we're doing um, the Smithsonian transcribing from five to 6 p.m. And we will be doing that over Zoom. And then professional development, here are three different opportunities that we will also post on the Facebook. Um, there is an opportunity with Fresh Prints to help large clubs create custom apparel and stuff. Um, the recruiter, that's his number if you're interested and share that you're with Quib. I can also um, send you his LinkedIn if you want to connect with him and talk to him through there. Um, and yeah, there's also an LGBTQ plus Gator Scholarship and a 2022 PIMCO Futures, Future Leaders Scholarship. So yeah, these links will also be sent out in um, the group meet and the Facebook, so you can catch them there. For internal development, um, just for a reminder for the mentor-mentee meetings, they're on March 13th, 11 a.m. and uh, we'll be at pick up. A picnic at Plaza of Americas. And then our last one will be April 5th, 5 o'clock p.m. And that will be before our GBM with Amazon. Also, just a reminder that the mentors and mentees to have proof of you guys have been communicating, and that'll be due at our meeting on March 13th. And then our socials, we have an inspiration mood words on March 2nd, uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then we are doing a painting social, and that will be to be next. I don't think we have time for the activity, so we'll do Kahoot next time, okay? <laughs> All right, Kyla. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Today's speaker is Brian Daniels with All Good Craft Vanilla Bars. He's an entrepreneur, and he's here today to speak to us about leadership and his personal experiences, and he's on the call with us now. Hi, Brian. Can you hear us? Hello, I can. Can you hear me? Awesome, we can hear you. And would you like to share your screen now if you have a presentation? Oh, no, actually, I don't have anything um, that I need to share my screen for. So I can just talk to you guys. I actually was preparing something and in the middle of it, I'm like, you know, what? I kind of want to have more of a conversational tone to this one um, and just kind of speak a little bit about my experience and kind of open it up for questions afterwards if anybody has any. Um, so uh, thank you, Kyla. For, for setting this all up. And thank you to Denise Beavers for um, introducing me to, to Kyla and to the organization. Uh, Denise helped me out last fall as an intern with my, with my company and you know, did a great job as far as helping expand brand reach and helping me research different packaging options and, um, and looking into the social media aspect. So, it, so she offered a, a lot for very little in return and she was an unpaid intern and uh, it continued to extend value to me even after uh, her time with me. So very thankful for that and thankful for the opportunity to talk to you guys today. Um, so my name is Brian Daniels. I am uh, the owner of All Good Craft Granola Bars. Uh, we make granola bars using spent grain from local craft breweries. So when they get done making beer, instead of wasting all that nutritious grain, we dry it out and then turn it into delicious all natural snack bars. So uh, we're all about sustainability, uh, promoting craft beer culture, um, but also making uh, healthy, delicious, you know, uh, snacks from all natural ingredients. So, um, and when I say we, um, I generally mean, mean I, um, I consider myself the, uh, you know, founder, CEO, CMO, chief technical officer, you know, head of finance and HR, everything else under the sun. So, um, I'm a company of one, but supported by many, including, as I mentioned, Denise and um, some other interns that have helped in the past, but uh, a large community around me that have, have helped me kind of get the company off the ground. So uh, it's been a few years in progress and, and steadily growing every day. So it's been an exciting process and uh, appreciative to get to talk to you guys about it a little bit. Um, before I get into um, my, my business today, uh, I kind of want to go back a little bit and, and just talk about some of my other 
um, experiences with leadership. So um, as I was going through, kind of thinking through some of the things I've gone um, gone through in my life that made me a leader or, or you know, caused me to have to express leadership in some form, um, it, one kind of stuck out in my mind. And I think it's especially because I'm talking to uh, a group of, of young college students who are possibly making spring break plans at the moment. So um, my story is uh, several years ago, I won't say how many, but you know, when I was in college, uh, it was spring break and uh, I went home to Virginia Beach and my plan was I wanted to throw away a huge motel party and invite all my friends and get rowdy and all that good stuff. So um, booked the hotel and got, um, you know, sent out the, the invite, sent out the invites and, and they invited a few of their friends and et cetera. And, you know, before you know it, we had a, you know, full on rager inside of a, a motel room. Um, so, you know, it was your typical party or whatever, but it got to a point where um, I'm in the back of the, the room, you know, just having a good time. And all of a sudden the music stops, you know, how the, the cliche kind of record skips and, and that's exactly what happened. Like music stops. And um, it was kind of like the biblical scene where, where Moses parts the Red Sea, where I'm here. And then all of a sudden the crowd split into exactly two portions. And as I'm looking down the, the clear pathway, there's three police officers there kind of waiting for me. And um, I heard one of the, there was a random guy in the crowd that's like, hey, I think they're looking for you, man. And um, and all that to say, I, I uh, kind of put my, the drink down that I was mixing and, and walked over and talked to the cops. And, uh, you know, long story short, they let us, let us go by the grace of God and, and nothing really bad happened that evening. But, um, I, I bring that story up because it wasn't my proudest moment for sure, and not something I you know tell everybody about. But uh, it was a time where the I think the core uh, components of leadership um, were on display in that you know debaucherous moment. So um, for me, I think there's a ton of different qualities that make someone a good leader, but the three kind of core components to leading anything is having a vision, um, taking action, and then also being accountable. So, you know, in, in my party example, I had the great vision to throw a, a rager at a, a, a hotel and invite a bunch of people and get wild. You know, that was my, my vision, however uh, narrow that was. Um, the actions I took, uh, you know, got got a buddy of mine to, to book the hotel for me, so it wasn't in my name and, you know, got someone else to get us, uh, get us alcohol because I probably was like 20 at the time and you know took the steps to to make the party happen um and then as far as accountability it was you know obviously when when things went down and and everything came to a screeching halt you know there was one person that had to basically step up and, and take responsibility for for everyone else that was there so um again not not meant to be a a, a shining example of leadership but just to give you kind of the core basics of what it takes to to be a leader and to lead a group of people in any situation. So we'll go, at that time, like I said, I was in college and um, I went to Virginia Tech, go Hokies. And after that graduated uh, in information technology was my major. So I kind of started doing healthcare analysis or data analysis for a healthcare company um, and worked there for uh, 16 years or so, uh, something like that. And, various capacities and, you know, eventually worked my way up to becoming a manager of a group of, of nine or 10 people. Um, but one thing I learned in, in the corporate world, and I think you'll, you'll learn as well, is uh, title doesn't equal leadership. Um, there are people that will be uh, above you or above the people above you even that um, have the title of director, manager, VP, but, you know, don't necessarily lead. Um, and, and it's pro probably because they lack one of those three uh, principles that I talked about, vision, action, and accountability. Um, myself personally, uh, the time when I wasn't a manager, I ended up becoming what's known as a subject matter expert, kind of the, the go-to guy for a lot of different areas of the company. Um, people could come to me and they could count on me to help them answer their question. If I didn't know the answer, find an answer for them or, or whatever it took. Um, and in that sense, I felt more of a leader than I did even when I became a manager. Um, you know, when I, I felt like I was a good manager of, of my team and uh, I employed the things that I thought would help, help them grow and help us be successful. But 
the division aspect was lacking a little bit. So when you're in a corporate situation, um, you can you can want things to be a certain way, but you have corporate policy and you have managers above you that might restrict the way you're able to um, kind of work with your team and 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 to see to see that vision through. So um, that was kind of my issue with with my my career, corporate career. You know, it was a great job, great benefits, but um, I was always kind of feeling unfulfilled, uh, especially in the the area of leadership. So uh, while I was working there. Um, Basically, right after college, I started also coaching soccer. So uh, I grew up playing soccer my whole life, you know, long, um, lifelong fan. And uh, when I left college, I went and started coaching a group of 10 year olds. And kind of throughout the years, I had different age groups um, of youth soccer, eventually coaching a uh, high school team. And um, that was one thing that I did on the side of my, of my corporate job. So it was definitely a labor of love in the sense that I would work you know, eight to five or whatever, get off work, drive straight to practice, you know, stopping at red lights to change my clothes into my, you know, soccer gear or whatever, coach until seven, eight, 10 o'clock, depending on if there was a game or something, and then go home and have dinner. And it was not for the pay, that's for sure. Um, it was, you know, I think this, I think this point in my life is when I was starting to learn more about internal reward versus the kind of external reward, you know, aka money. So, um, I put uh, a lot of effort and sometimes more effort into the, the coaching part of my life than I did kind of the corporate side, just because in that role, you get to truly feel fulfilled, especially as a leader. Um, and there's tons of rewards that come from coaching. Um, I know a lot of you guys might uh, might be uh, athletes yourself or, or, or coaches yourself as well. And you see all the rewards that come from that, you know, teaching young girls how to learn a new skill or to, to be strong or to, you know, persevere. Um, that's a rewarding, um, that's a rewarding thing in itself. But I think probably the most valuable thing that I got from coaching, um, I didn't learn until a couple of years later, as I saw my old players grow into parents and police officers and firefighters and business owners and things like that. And I learned that, you know, good, leaders will create a decent number of followers but the, the the great joy is when those followers then turn into good leaders because of your leadership so um, i think that for me tied into a little bit of the accountability aspect in the sense that um not only am i responsible for for the success of, of my team but i'm responsible for them wanting to be good leaders to to future generations down the road so um all that to say, coaching is something I still do today and, and still get a lot of value from. And uh, if you ever get a chance to, I highly recommend it. Um, and so then, uh, like I said, I was working in the, the corporate job for a long time. Um, and in 2019, I actually left, you know, with, you know, the, the pie in the sky hope of, of starting my own businesses. And it wasn't to start the granola business, actually. It was to start um, a couple of other businesses. So as random as it sounds, uh, I got certified as a personal trainer in 2018 and was kind of planning to lean on my um, coaching experience to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching, one-on-one -on -one training, uh, group training, that kind of thing. Um, but at the same time, my other side hustle besides coaching was DJing. So I started DJing parties and weddings and events and clubs back in my college days did some more when I moved back to Virginia Beach and was another thing that I kind of did on the side uh, of my of my regular job. So anyway, got uh, business license to become a, a mobile DJ and start that company. And that was my goal. I wanted to be in the corporate world and just see what kind of life I could build for myself um, using experiences that I that I'd built over the years. So uh, things were going not obviously not as great as as, you know, a job that you've been at for 15 years, but I was you know, you know, fully enjoying myself and, and learning um, how to be an entrepreneur. But the crazy thing that happened is that I, uh, in the meantime, I had a hobby with me and my buddies. We used to uh, brew beer together. So we would come up with recipes and um, head over to the shop and, and make beer. And a few weeks later, try it out and, and share it with our friends. And in that process, you end up throwing away a lot of, uh, of grain. Um, it's basically malted barley that's used to make beer. Um, and so 
for me, the the way that the malted barley smelled in that process was so delicious, like it almost like baking bread in a sense. And I wanted to figure out a way to use that to to eat it essentially. So after making beer one time, I kept the grains, um, took them home, dried them out, uh, and then incorporated some other ingredients to kind of make the first batch of granola bars. And the first batch didn't come out well, and the second was a little bit better, but eventually I came up with a recipe that people liked. And it got to a point where people would buy the bars for me, and so much so that I had too many orders for the amount of grain that I had. Um, so that's kind of when the, the light bulb moment went out, happened. And, uh, I was like, well, let me go to the breweries. They've got to have, you know, plenty to go around. So the first brewery that I went to, the uh, owner was like, yeah, I actually just made some beer today. You want these grains? And he came out with a big old bucket. And that's literally the day it became a business, you know, two and a half years ago. So it's, it's one of those things where um, walking out on faith and, and believing in yourself can sometimes lead to greater things than you kind of expected in the first place. Um, and so on the entrepreneurial side of things, it's kind of the culmination of all those three aspects I talked about earlier, um, like turned up to turned up to 10, 11. Um, division, action, accountability, those are all yours. It's all 100% yours. Um, the things you, the ideas you generate, kind of the, the actions you take, the steps you take day to day, um, the way you respond to issues, essentially, determines the success or failure of your business. So um, that's one thing I, I just want uh, you to take away from this, this conversation is that um, if you're able to kind of ground yourself around those, those core principles and um, try to improve those qualities in yourself that, that bring that out, uh, it'll, it'll help you in whatever situation you're leading. Um, I think all of you guys, all of you, all of you ladies would be considered leaders in your own right, whether you're a leader of this organization, whether you're a leader in um, on, on the athletic field, whether you're a, a manager at your current job or, or anything, or even just the, the leader of your apartment. Like, if we're all honest, I think if you have two or three roommates, you have to admit that you consider one the leader. So uh, there's lots of different ways you can employ leadership, but um, again, having a vision, taking action, and then being accountable is, is how you uh, breed success and how you also bring up a team of followers that have your back and also will eventually take care of your customers, in my case, take care of my customers in return. Um, so, you know, I, I just want to kind of end with a quote before I open it up to Q&A and see whatever questions you have. Um, and the quote is, Traveler, there is no path. The path is made by walking. Uh, it's by Spanish poet uh, Antonio Machado. Um, and I like this quote, especially as it relates to this talk, because it kind of incorporates the, the three uh, qualities I was talking about. Um, so you, you have to have the vision to see a path where there currently is, is not one. So what is it, what ideas are you generating? What, what thoughts do you have around making something better or creating something that doesn't currently exist. Um, and then kind of once you have that vision, you know, creating the path by taking the steps you think are necessary to, to see out that vision. Um, in my example, like I said, I, I, I left my, my, my corporate job to start something totally unrelated to what I currently do now, but I would have never gotten to that point if I hadn't taken the other steps to start those businesses and to see what it means to be an entrepreneur and to, you know, experiment with things. So, um, and then finally on the, uh, on the aspect of accountability, um, you've got to be accountable for the people that follow the path that you make. So if you have a vision, you start carving that out and there's people that come along with you, then you're responsible for those people. And you're also responsible for making sure that those people have the ability and, and the desire even to make their own path away from yours eventually. So um, all that to say, this quote hopefully kind of sums up what, I, what I've been trying to say um, over the past few minutes. And that's just basically, you know, um, have an idea, take the steps to see it through, and then 
take accountability for whether it goes good or bad, you know, at the end of the day. So um, I'll say one more time, just so you, you have it in your head. Um, Traveler, there is no path. The path is made by walking. Um, you guys are, are awesome. And I look forward to answering whatever questions you have. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Uh, that was very inspirational coming from an entrepreneur. This one is the first one we've had all semester. So we appreciate you for coming. Um, awesome. Does anyone on Zoom have any questions or anyone in person have any questions, please feel free to unmute and um, ask Brian. Great presentation. Um, I have a question and it's not really much on the entrepreneurship side, but like more making a recipe. But um, I'm assuming that breweries have different, like use different kinds of grains that affect the way that the granola bar is tasted? I'm no like connoisseur. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so it does not, I'll, I'll say it does not because for 99% of people that aren't beer nerds like myself, you would never know the difference of kind of what the grains go in there. There are some recipes that use extra ingredients that make it difficult for me to make the bars from them. And so I don't use, the grains from certain beers, um, but everything that I do use is pretty uniformly the same thing. It's kind of just like like wheat. It's almost tasteless until we add all the good stuff to it. Great, thank you. That was just, I don't know, I was so curious about that. And also like, where are you selling to? How big has your like company grown over the past few yep. years? Yeah, so it's it's steadily, steadily growing and each day there's like a new surprise. So it started out with me selling them in at farmer's markets. So I have my little booth in my tent and um, we had like a weekly farmer's market at the, the beach resort area. Um, and I still do that. Um, but over time it's kind of expanded to retail locations such as the convenience stores and like um, climbing gyms and regular gyms and um, breweries and, and places like that. So um, at this point we're more local but kind of with the next step is hopefully like a Whole Foods or kind of a, a local um, local market chain is kind of the next step. That's awesome, thank you for answering. I was yeah. wondering, oh, um, wait, um, when you, are you having, do you have, sorry, it was like echoing, it was so confusing. Do you have plans to ship it or like, around the country so like someone could go to your website and then order the granola bar or someone like a manufacturing company somewhere else or like you know in the future and stuff yes and i was actually going to was meant to add that at the, the end of my last uh, little little answer there but we have a website allgoodgranolabars.com um so people go there all the time and and order we I haven't confirmed this yet, but I want to say we've shipped to every state except for Hawaii, I believe at this point. Um, so we've, through, through mostly social media and kind of the use of, of um, you know, some people to kind of trumpet our product in influencer style, we've gotten some reach across the country over the past few years. So, so yeah, that's kind of the cool thing about it is even ship some to Canada at this point where it's like, it's a really small business. I make these granola bars in my home kitchen at the moment, but there's people all over the world that have heard of our product. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna steal the floor before someone else asks a question, but thank you so much, Brian, for talking to us. I know it's been really inspirational. Um, I'm in like different, interested in entrepreneurship stuff, but I think it's really hard like to actually make it like just in general. So that's really inspirational. Like you're kind of telling us like it's possible. But I wanted to know, um, I feel like it's a really big change from what you were doing in the IT area to just like being an entrepreneur. So like, what kind of support system did you have? Like, I feel like you obviously couldn't have done that yourself. And like, what tips do you have for us if we're looking for people to lean on? Absolutely. So for me, um, uh, I have a wife of nine years this spring. Um, two children, um, a mother who still lives pretty close by and has always been uh, very influential and supportive in my life. Um, so I've, and, you know, brothers and sisters that live close by too. So I've always had a decent family structure around me to keep me grounded and, and show me kind of what's important in life um, and kind of um, 
keep me grateful, you know, because, you know, ultimately their their safety and happiness is the most important thing. And as long as they're around, I'm not as scared to take certain chances. Um, and then the other thing is I may, I may look brave now that I quit my job and, and have a business, but I was I was scared. I was frightened for, and I still am. Like it's still, every day, there's it's still a struggle to be like, oh man, should I just go back to work and get a paycheck in two weeks and, and see what happens? But you know, the for me, the the best way to go about it was to plan ahead. So I've always been sort of a logical person, as you can see by the IT degree. Like um, I try to to think ahead. What could I do? What experiences do I have? And how could I bring value to people with that experience? But also, what do I need to do in between now and then to make it a reality? So saving money, getting certified, um, getting the business license ahead of time, like lining up all those things before taking the leap to quit. So um, so if you're not well, so if you're not 40 years old, like I was when I quit, you know, if you're young, like you guys are, you guys are in a, a great position to experiment now and take some of those risks. And as long as you even if your family doesn't understand it know that they still love you and only want what's best for you. And even if you fail five years down the road and, and have to go do whatever else they, they told you to do in the first place, you haven't really lost anything. Like you're still ahead of the game and you've got to at least try. Thank you so much. Yep, of course. Quick question, bouncing off of the Theo's question, uh, how did you find the confidence to take those risks that you were talking about before? Like, uh, do you have any advice for students who are interested in starting their own business or company? And uh, what advice would you give to them? Sure. Um, so I would say, one thing I didn't, I didn't realize until I kind of, I got out of the corporate world was that I had been an entrepreneur all along. So when I tell you that I was DJing the whole time, you know, I was writing up contracts and I was making sure that I was, you know, doing the things kind of in a business-like fashion, same with the coaching, like everything that I did, I tried to approach it as if it was in my own personal business. So um, all I have to say, I've always kind of had it in me to want to see things happen a certain way. So if you are, someone that feels that same way and you want to be an entrepreneur too, um, it's, it's something you should pursue. It's not something you should suppress. I think it's easy to, you know, take the quote unquote easy way out a, a lot of times, but, you know, if you have something you're, you feel strongly about and you're willing to take the steps to get there, then, then you should, you should just go for it. Like there's, you really shouldn't let some of these obstacles getting in your way from at least, you know, to keep you from trying. So I think that, you know, my biggest piece, piece of advice to somebody that wants to try is simply to, to do it. If that means you have to do it while you're in another job, then that just proves that you're, you really mean it. You know, like, like I said, in my case, I was going straight from work and then going to soccer. And then sometimes I would sleep in my car and then go up the next day to go DJ somewhere, like whatever it took to make those things happen is, is, is what I did. So if you really want to be an entrepreneur, you can do it regardless of where you are, regardless if you have a job currently, if you're a student, if you're 10 years old, just do, create something and sell it. Awesome, thank you. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I had something to ask. Um, you talked a lot about like your vision and having your own vision and how that's important. So I was just wondering, what is your personal vision and goals for your company? Like, what do you hope is next for you? For sure. Um, it, it's, it's corny. Um, my, my company is called All Good Granola. People ask me kind of why I call it that. And it's because it's a statement that I use a lot. I consider myself a, a positive person and regardless of what people or what situations come up and generally speaking, my response is it's all good. Like we'll sort out whatever, whatever that issue is. So um, all that to say, I want to build a company that, that, that actually does good, that, you know, doesn't talk about it, that, you know, isn't, that doesn't use it, does, doesn't use it to sell, but just is, but just is it. Um, so 
my, like I said, well, our company is, is, is focused on sustainability. And on the back end, we also have a focus on fighting, fighting hunger. So we work with our local food banks to, um, to donate and to donate snacks as well as to, to donate money in the, in the hope that we can reduce food waste and try to turn that into something that helps reduce hunger on a larger scale over time. So right now it's as small as can be, but the vision is that it's something that's scalable on a national level um, where there's multiple versions of all good in different states working with all the different breweries and, you know, and, um, and kind of touching all those different communities at the same time. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of people could consider it idealistic, but at this point I'm already doing it on a small scale. So why can't I, you know, make it bigger and better? So that's the plan. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Are there any final questions? If not, I will pass it to Emily. Thank you again, Brian, for speaking today. We appreciate those words. And hopefully everyone was left with a little more information about entrepreneurship, leadership, and got to take something away from it. Yes, for sure. Thank you, guys. And um, I have uh, an unpaid un unpaid internship opportunity this summer, if you're interested. I think Kyla has that information. Um, and then also, if you are an athlete or know someone that's a student athlete, we also have a uh, name, image, and likeness opportunity if that's something you're interested in as well. So uh, thanks for your time and, and wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. I <laughs> loved the presentation. It's so great to have an entrepreneur and just get that like breath of fresh air and hear from someone who's like starting from the pulling themselves up from the bootstraps um, and just like going through this whole journey by themselves. And I've really appreciated your presentation. I think it's great. Um, as for, I'm gonna pull up the feedback form and also, also the sign-in sheet again. I'm sorry guys, laptop's doing some funny things today. Okay. Um, if no one has any questions or anything, I'm gonna share my screen and give you guys a feedback form. And if you don't have any questions, you're good to go. So thanks for coming. Our next meeting is 